What's up, tubers? MC Nash. Um, wanted to uh, show you a knife I picked up uh, from Brandon over at KW Gunworks. Purchased a few knives from him, actually. This was just one of them I wanted to show you. I'm kind of uh, getting back into knives and such. Um, this is the uh, ZT200. Um, ZT is a division of Kershaw. It's like their tactical, you know, division. And, um, uh, you know, this is a heavy-duty folder. And, um, you know, I, I just like big, heavy-duty folders, man. That's just what I'm into. So, anyway, serious missions, serious knives, zero tolerance. Of course, you have the American built on there as well. What drew me to this knife mainly was the, uh, the 3D machined G10. It's got a very unique pattern and feel to it. It's very grippy yet smooth. So it doesn't feel like it's going to shred pockets. Um, let's see. So there you have the uh, folder. The blade is four and a quarter inches. It's got a tungsten coat to it. Nice curve to it. Very bulky and hefty. Um, this is not your typical EDC. It's very thick and heavy duty. Stainless steel liners that are skeletonized. <clears throat> it also has a thumb stud on here. So those, and it's a liner lock, as you can see. Um, so you can open it up by the thumb stud. This is a non-assisted version, by the way. The assisted version is like literally a hundred bucks more. So, or you can depress the uh, the blade. So what I was saying was the blade steel um, is uh, 154 cm. This is a Ken Onion design, made in the USA, as I said before. Just a hell of a heavy duty folder. Um, this is probably the best quality slash duty blade I've ever held. Um, I don't know if that's not really saying much, but um, I know Emerson's really good too, but I mean, this is just a beast, you know? Um, the uh, Cold Steel Spartan that I previously, re previously reviewed uh, that blade is a beast too, but that the knife part is the the handle is is like that craton you know hard plastic. It's not nearly as uh, quality as this, you know. Um, and you know you get what you pay for. That's about half the price of this too. Yeah, um, I think Brandon uh, hadn't uh, owned a ZT, and when he got when he got him in, he bought one for himself. He liked it so much. I think he's got another one that he still uses every day. Um, retail on these is about 160 street price, um, probably about 120, just to give you guys a heads up on price on these. Very sweet blade. Definitely get a good purchase on it. Still, still some room to spare. Um, let's see. Oh, I carry this, uh, I switch the pocket clip. I carry right side, uh, tip up. That's just how I carry my knives. I carry on my weak side because I carry my pistol on my left side and I always have a gun on my right side. So, um, I've learned to embrace the right hand, right handed knife position and I'm comfortable with it even though I'm lefty. Um, I just like having one on each side just in case I can't reach on one side. I have something on the other. Um, pocket clip is, you know, it's, it could be a little bit better. Um, <clears throat> it's not anything special. But, uh, you know, I'd say it's average. But everything else besides the pocket clip is just perfect on this knife. Um, I'm really enjoying it. And um, you're at 7.7 .7 ounces, so... At 7.7 .7 ounces, it is on the heavier side, but it, you know it's a four and a quarter inch blade. 
It's got double reinforced um, liners. They are skeletonized, but just very, very sturdy. And um, it's got switchable the belt clip positions on all four corners, so it's very versatile. And um, that's about it. Um, I wanted to mention um, Miller USAF. Um, he just did a video. I'm not going to mention which video. You can figure it out for yourself, but I just felt like I had to say something. Um, you know, there's uh, certain people on YouTube that uh, cannot put up with uh, positive criticism and, um, and are automatically labeled trolls because they contradict um, the subject matter. And um, some people can't handle that and they just get blocked. They block people which I think is chicken shit for somebody like that to do it. It just, it just goes to show that it's their way or the highway and they're not open for debate. They're, they're not open for, for discussion because discussion entails both sides of a conversation, both sides of a debate. Um, and uh, this person obviously can't handle that. So um, it's pretty evident to me. It was evident early on. Some people are catching it you know, now and, and some people are just aren't getting the point, but there are a lot of posers on YouTube, more bigger than others. And this one's probably the biggest on YouTube. So you can comment, feel free to comment on or rate, you know, thumbs down, whatever. I don't give a shit. I'm not in it for the money. Um, I do this cause I enjoy making videos and I enjoy the feedback. If you have some positive criticism, I'm not, I'm not deleting comments. If you're going to be, if you're going to be an immature little prick, yeah, I'm going to delete your comment and I'll probably block you. I haven't, I haven't blocked anyone yet in the almost year that I've been on YouTube. I've not blocked one person, but you know, there's always a first time for everything, <laughs> but I don't mind, I don't mind positive, respectful criticism. And I don't mind people that disagree with my views and, and or want to explain their view. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. But, you know, I don't even have comment pending approvals. You know, if you comment, it goes right on there for everybody to see, you know, whether it's on my homepage or in my video. I encourage people to do that. I don't discourage uh, positive criticism. I'm always looking to be, nobody's perfect. I'm always looking to be a better person. I'm always looking to, you know, better my life in whatever it is. So that's why I don't take any offense to stuff like that. And this person does, which just displays his character and, and just basically makes him a, uh, you know, somebody who can't be trusted. So anyway, that's all I had to say. I